internationals expectations or hopes and dreams are for every key club they don't expect you to do everything just like every teacher doesn't expect everybody to get A's and do every single thing on their you know that's on their syllabus but that's the idea so this is kind of like your guideline so what Kelly's going to do is she's going to go over the AAR and you have a copy in your folder so if you kind of sit as a club and you look at it as, you, as she's going through it, if that's something that you want to know more about or something you think you should be working on, you might want to put a star or highlight it or whatever it is you want to do, just so that you're thinking about it, okay? Because that's just your working paper for now. Okay? Okay. So all of this information here at the top, if you look at it, it says task one. So once you complete each step, or like I think continually input information to your and we're after the numbers will change. So you pretty much don't touch these anything here. They'll automatically go in for you. So all your club information will go under task one and I'll review that later. So basically club meetings, if you look at it, so you want to hold club meetings during the year as input information, the number will increase. During school breaks, you want to have or try to hold meetings that way your club is informed, whether it's officer or general club but if you do officer meetings you may want to email all your clubs to update them on projects or things that you discuss at the board um make sure your faculty advisor is there at your meetings that way they can give input if they need anything also your kiwani's advisor should be there every so often board meetings if you hold board meetings that's great because you should as a board discuss what your objectives or ideas for the week for the month that way you'll be organized when you have your general club meetings you know what she's going really fast and she's talking really fast so what you need to do is you need to say wait what is that how often do i need to have a board meeting what do you suggest you have to ask those questions so can you please do that with when she's doing this because otherwise <coughs> we're going to assume you know everything and you know what we all do not know everything not even me so you know okay so do you, do you folks have board meetings? Yes. yes. Do you folks have it at least once a month? Yes. That's great. <coughs> okay. Okay. So you want to have a meetings or if you want to have like projects with um, a speaker or like a, have a, pro a program. Like for example, Hilo High Key Club, we do, um, or we help with Special Olympics. So if there's like a bocce ball tournament, 
we have a person from Special Olympics come and teach us how to do bocce ball so we can work with the kids a little better and we have a better understanding of what we're doing. So you want to have at least six um, guest speakers. <coughs> that way you're to get the full points. And guest speakers don't have to be related to, I mean, like if you're doing a project, you can have that. But it can also be like an inspirational type of speaker. It doesn't need to be related to a project you're doing within your club. And special meetings, for example, banquets. Do you know what the purpose is? I'm sorry, I'm interrupting her, but do you know what the purpose of having a guest speaker? Do you know that Kiwanis, is that true, Josh? Kiwanis have guest speakers at their meetings frequently? They try, yes. Yeah. But why do you think they do that? Because they want to learn about what's happening within their community, and they want to um, uh, be, become an active part of the community. So, so for example, like she said, Special Olympics or Relay for Life or you know those kinds of different things. They have speakers come to their meetings. The Kiwanis do too. So that's why they encourage you. And so if you look at that, what they're saying is they're hoping that throughout the year, at least six times, you'll have somebody come and talk. Now, this could be a really good and easy way to do it. Maybe in August, you have somebody who graduated, a key club who graduated the year before, and they want to come and they want to share about their college experience and why it's important to participate in key club because then how it helped them to get scholarships or blah, 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 you know? You got it? You can have any kind of speaker like that. Okay. And then you have your special meetings if you have club bank banquets or Kiwani's banquets, whatsoever, then you can include that into your MRF. Okay. So, club reports. Um, so, you, this part right here, yeah. So, you can up and put that. So, basically, if you turn it in by the third, then you're on time. Um, club elections, don't forget to fill that information out on this tab. That way it will, your points will actually accumulate if you fill out these information, including your directory, which is on another tab. So do you guys understand that you don't have to do anything to the AAR? It's, it's your way of going to check and s check your own report card. How are we doing, right? So you can go back and check. Because what you do <laughs> on the rest of your MRF will show up on there. <coughs> okay, and then your dues payment, which is on one of the your monthly tabs, and you can input that if your phone numbers have to at that time. Okay, division involvement. If you attended a division re or region training conference, which I will be do, then don't forget to put that in for your, or you know, make sure you click yes, you're in attendance, and the amount of people that were in attendance at the uh, RTC. So this is basically self-explanatory into like when you input it into your MRF. Homepage is um, convention. Yeah. Okay. So communication. Club newsletter. If you don't have one, then that's okay. You don't. Or You're not, not required a, yeah. to have one. But um, the the. They would like for you to have them, but you know, when they first designed Key Club and all of these forms, it was the days before um, social media. You know, like now you could probably share information or you know what's happening by looking at your friend, your Facebook or whatever. Well, in the old days, they didn't have such things. So they had newsletters so that we could share newsletters with each other with pictures of what the project was and whatever, right? But so not everybody has a newsletter. But if you do a newsletter, they would hope that you do um, at least one a quarter. But like I said, not many people do it, but if you want to, we'd love for you to do it. Okay. Um, so if you submit any articles to the district, CNA Key Club, so you can submit it to us and we'll submit that on to CNA. So if you submit it to us and, we, and if we do send your submission on, then we'll let you know and then you can put that information into your MRF. Um, yeah. Same thing as if you, if you have your own website. Some yeah. people do, some people don't. Club membership, so. So if you have a new member induction or some kind of new member thing, then don't forget to input that in for your month, for the month. Um, 
conferences, attendance, same thing, at region training conference, or any one of these, don't forget to include that in, and I'll automatically go through. Um, leadership development, if you do have an officer training, there is a um, spot there on the MRF, if it's a, just, a, there's sections for each one, there's like, if president was in attendance or for the president's training conference, then you may, want to include that information in there too. Um, um, did Honolulu's Kiwani sponsor an office for training? Was it Kiwani? I don't think so. Because oh, I thought it was reading something in um, Eugene's newsletter that they were going to do an office for training. So I didn't know if it was them for the adults or for the folks or not. I think it was a Kiwani's office. Oh. So she going on today. Oh, is that what this one is? The, the, the event that the Kiwanis members are all at right now is the um, CLA or the Club Leadership Training, which is their, or okay. their our version of the OTC. Well, put it this way, if your officers come to RTC, we will do um, some officer training, so you will be able to check two buttons by that one attendance, both an officer training and an um, regional training. Okay, and then going back to membership activities, if you have club socials, whether it's I mean, within your club, if you have inter-club social, so for example, other Kiwani's family or with your um, sponsoring club, then there is a section underneath your club meeting attendance that you should fill in, and there's the different um, acronyms for, or depending what you explain that. Yeah, I'll go back to that. Okay, um, Percentage of members. So actually, as you put in information, yeah, it will, you see that one there where it says uh, percentage of members in leadership positions, not just the people. And when you talk about leadership positions, you're talking about um, how many people chair projects. And um, I don't know about all of you, but when Kelly and I look at the MRF, we'll look and sometimes in the same month, one person has chaired three projects. And yet the club has 100 members. Not so good. Share the leadership. Try to get everybody to do it, right? So that later on you'll be able to say more than half of the members of our club either chaired or held office, right? Because that's how you teach everybody, give everybody a chance. Okay. Okay, so, so this information here about district or international will all come in task one or your cook where you input the member information. Um, and it's okay if you don't have people here. There is like a point total section, so if you don't get, you're not gonna, I mean, if you don't have people on the board, then you're not gonna get points for that, but don't worry about it because most of us don't have people on international or district. Kiwani's involvement, it's good to be active with your sponsoring Kiwani's club or, you know, the other clubs in your K family and get to know each other, so if you do have any projects or joint projects, then don't forget to include that into your MRF. So if, if it's like a Kiwani social project, then that's gonna be your title. And don't forget to uh, mark the boxes with, you know, joint sponsored or hosted by Kiwani symbols. But I'll go over that when we look at the MRF. Um, so your service projects. So as you input your service projects, these will all add up as well as your total hours and fundraisers. So if you go So this is your scoring area. So all these um, numbers, they're, they correspond to something. So if you look at it, and as you like input information and you submit it and you go back to your AR each month and you see sections that need improvement, then, then you know which numbers or which sections by looking at these. And the, total, the total score you can get is 200 and a lot of our clubs this year had like 160 or about maybe like I think eight of our clubs and so we're just like when you get a report card you get A's or B's but with the um, annual achievement report clubs are recognized as distinguished clubs or diamond level distinguished and so this year we were expecting like eight clubs um, IAEA, Kaiser, Hawaii, Punahou, uh, Waikia, Hilo, a lot of clubs, but actually we only had four get diamond level distinguished. And it's kind of weird because they just change where they cut off things. Like, like 
if your teachers were to change where they cut off from a B to an A, that's what they did this year. So it changes. It. But I think that it's important that, um, what is the number just to be um, a distinguished? To be distinguished, I think you have to have like 130, 140. Yeah. yeah. I think this year was like 135 or something like that. So if you look at that number, right now it says 63, and you go, wow, that's not, how am I going to get up to 130, right? But you'll be very surprised that when, as the year goes on, the number grows, right? It's just like your grade, the more work you do, the more points you're going to get and whatever. And so what happens is, is if you set a goal for yourself, we want to be a distinguished club, which means that you're not getting an A+, plus, but you're getting an A, right? The magic number is 135 or something like that, and you, you aim for that, right? Um, this year, we were very, very lucky that the majority of our clubs had 100 or higher, which is excellent, okay? Um, in our whole district, there was nobody who had 200, so don't think that that's what our goal has to be, okay? Okay, so this is your annual achievement report. Do you guys have any questions? about it. You can always check yours on your MRF. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we'll go to task one. So this is the MRF. You see all the tasks underneath? That's all the things and it's a wealth of information. So as the, as the club secretary and the club president, because the UFOs have access to all of this, you should be looking at it frequently just to see what you need to do and where you want to go. Okay, so task one is pretty much your club information. This is our Hawaii State the 10 club. So you're going to put club information here, and all this information you input will be already inputted into each month, so you don't need to worry about fixing that. So once you input it in, then that's it for club information. Club officers, you want to include, or this is just to help you and it will also be transferred into the other monthly submissions. Mm -hmm. yeah, don't forget to also include your meeting time and location. You want to include the day, the time, and the location of your meeting. So if you say lunch, can you like just put a time instead so we know? Because lunch is a general time. Okay. And then questions. So if you have a member that is serving as a district officer or committee member, for example, if so my club MRF should say yes since I'm a lieutenant governor, as well as Keegan because he serves on the district level as member recognition chair. So if you have somebody either on the district or international level, then please be sure to click yes. Um, so the Jikiwani is sponsoring fulfill the obligations of sponsorship, most likely yes they are helping you. And if you, your club co-sponsors a Builders Club or a K-Kids, so Builders is intermediate, K-Kids is elementary, then be sure to click yes. And there are some of you here who do have um, a Builders Club that's in your in your thing, and, and some of you have K-Kids. And if it's something that you'd like to do and you need more information about, because let's say there's an elementary school right across the street, or like Iolani, there's whatever, what's the school? I, yeah, all why. So you might say, oh, we want to do a K Kids Club right over there so that we can help them or whatever. And if you need help to do that, we can help you to go through that process and so can your Kiwanis Club. And um, um, it could be a lot of work or it could not be a little bit of work. It depends on how you look at what it is you want to do. Okay, so next on is your club directory. So if you fill in task one as well as this club directory, you will get points for it, so, it's, so it is important. I also need this information to be inputted into my division MRF, so if you guys haven't yet completed your um, club directory, can you at least input your officer contact information and send it to me as soon as possible, that way I can finalize my division um, roster or directory. And we can send you emails. Yeah, that way I can better get into contact with you. So this... Wait, Kagan has a question. Sorry. Um, so what do we do about alumni? Like, do we just not include it on the MRF? Yeah, so they're not, yeah, they're no longer part of the club. What if we're, like, kind of new? Like, I don't, I 
haven't had this yet, so like, am I gonna get it and I'm supposed to submit it as soon as possible? Oh yeah, I'll send that to She'll send it to you. Yeah. Can you ask it? Yeah. Okay. On what month do we actually need off? Uh, we were having a problem with Is it April, May? When do we actually clear out alumni? Actually, actually you don't clear out alumni until you pay your dues. Until you pay your dues. So Caitlin should still be keeping the alumni on there? Well, they're not, yeah, you can, you can just leave them on there. But you see, you don't, because you have to type them all in new, because they're no longer on there. Because in April, you got a new MRF. And so nobody's on there. So you just add the now people. But you know on your roster for your dues, the old people are still there. And they don't get erased until you literally delete them when you add your new people. So that comes at the beginning of the year with the treasure? Yes. Okay. Yes. And we're going to be on top of it this year because we certainly want all of you folks to be covered by insurance. See, the thing with dues is it's tied to liability. And you know in this day and age, you do a service project, somebody breaks their leg, oh my God, oh my gosh, their parents are gonna be on you. So now everything is covered when you're insured, right? Yes, John. Um, the Kiko directly starts April then, right? Yes. So the new number of, they're not gonna put the people on there, but the roster that they're turning in is not doing until November. So then, What's our count that we should be using from April to November? Your, the, the current count that you paid for last year. So a senior would still be on our count yes. on, even in September? Yes. A, a senior that just graduated yes. would still be on And you know, the, the junk part I don't like about it is I feel like it counts against us. Yeah. You know, but um, um, there's the, the way the mechanism works, the peak of year starts April 1st, or convention, actually, yeah. they tell you. Convention, not April 1st but from April until the next convention. So it goes, and that's how the MRF works. But the dues is a little bit different. So in other words, the reason they keep it that way is let's say that your seniors come with you to a service project during the summer, they're still covered. But you haven't taken new members yet. That's why as soon as you start beginning the new member pro process, what we do is when you do a new member process, we collect dues. So as soon as the, the uh, thing comes up, we're, we're paying for them because we don't want them not to be covered. And so even our um, old members, when, our, when, our, when we do a new member application, we do what we call a recommitment form. And the recommitment form is kind of an abbreviated version of an application form. And we say, do you still agree that you want to be a member, or that you will do the service? Here, have your parents sign these things and turn in $15. And we do that all at once. So if you ask us by September 10th, or some, we have everybody's dues. So as soon as we get that letter, we can do it. I still have a question about that. So the members that come in like August, you can't input them on the MRF until the treasurer. You can input them on your MRF, but you, they are not um, on the official roster until they pay their dues and you include them on the dues beginning sometime about September 15th. So our MRF and our roster are going to be two different numbers? Yes. All the way until November. Well, hopefully you'll pay well, your dues, right, Scott, right, before right, the right, we pay our dues. All the way until we pay our dues. Yes. Yes. And that's why sometimes, you know, when you do the MRS and the hours looks really weird because this number really big because now you have all these new people in August and September. So sometimes there's that little... So when Kelly was reporting that we're averaging 25 hours, which count do they use? Do they use the count that's in September? Do they use the count that's in December? They add everything up from, from April to April, or convention to convention. So they're using last year's yes. total membership yes. and this year's total hours? Well, not totally, because it goes only until eight. Right, right, right. Yeah. 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 <coughs> Okay, so this code directory roster, you can change it, format it any way you want. It's just a template to help you come up with the way you want to create your roster directory. You can also print it out and use it as your club contact information, or if you want to make a separate phone tree for your club, that's fine too. 
But please have your member's name, their position, email, and preferred phone when you submit it to me so I can input into the division. And can I just <coughs> remind all of you that uh, you can only have one president, one secretary, and one treasurer. But you can have as many as one to five vice presidents. Okay? So don't put secretary recording, secretary corresponding, because there's no such thing. Okay? But you can put vice president of communication or something else. And that list is everybody. So yeah. Members. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Service record. Okay, so this service record sheet is to help you count or total the amount of hours for each member. So it can be a tedious job, especially if you have a lot of service projects and a lot of members. So what you're going to do me. Okay, so you input their name and then the project, the date, and how many hours they received. So this will help you total up and see. It automatically yeah, it for yeah. But if, you're off, if your members want to know how much hours they're making, then you can refer to this if you're constantly updating it with projects. But I think that you need to know that every club has a different way that they might be doing this. We have our own spreadsheet because the way we do <coughs> ours, and we do ours by the month and whatever, and stuff like that. So we have our own. So we don't do that. But I notice that the clubs who do that, and I, cause, because I have access and you know you submit, I can see the clubs who do that, they tend to know better how many hours everybody has because it's like visible right there. And they zero and it highlights so and so who did nothing, you know, and then somebody who did really well. Yeah, so it's, it's just a tool that you can use if you want. Are we required to use that? You can develop your own form. And it's just so long you keep it somewhere. It's good to paste it on here so that Kelly can see that your club members are trying to be in good standing, so they're each trying to get 50 hours. We tried to piece it. I don't know why we couldn't do it. Maybe you'll teach us. I don't know why I took mine in individually. Yeah. Okay, and then on to club election tab. So just put this club, your officer information once you have elected your officers, which I hope you did. So please just input this information. And then me. Okay. So for next school year. So like when you when you elect your officers for next year, then you put this in. Why don't you put this year's officers in? No, it was on the last time around. Because it's, it's like election results. Work. So like because you're supposed to Key Club International wants you to do to do your elections in February, but some of you do it in March or April. But it's this is like a end of the year kind of reporting for your election results. But then, if you don't put it in now, there's nothing there. Well, you use the, um, yeah, there's nothing there, so you use the directory. That. Well, but you should put it in. Otherwise, it looks like they have not, no officers. Is that right? No. <laughs> <laughs> because not everybody submitted, formally submitted their results. Yeah. So that's why if they do this, then it'll be formally submitted. <laughs> we'll talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so then again, you can review your annual achievement report scores on the tab. It's a high score, Keegan, you got up there. Yeah. I think it broke it. <laughs> <laughs> we saw you break it. <laughs> what happened to 63? No, that's, that's bad then, because that means all of them are broken. You can get uh, Okay, and then as you input projects onto your MRF, then it will automatically go into here, and hopefully it will all match up, because I know sometimes mine did it. But did it? It's, it's, it you're, I think you're going to find that all the ones I checked, for, that you first submitted for April and May doesn't all match up. No, so in other words, if you had five projects for April, it should have said five different projects. And for some people, only had three. And I said, where is the other two? And for some reason, it didn't come on. So we're working on that to make sure that all of the projects that you have 
on your MRF. So, um, right come here. But if you do notice that it's missing, like when I did my MRF, then I just went back and I inputted it information. Because it is already on your MRF, you can just go back for the project hours and hours. So it's pretty simple. Okay, going on to completing your actual MRF for each month. So, your club meeting dates, please input it so we actually know that you did have a meeting because if you don't put a date, then you're kind of unsure if you have a meeting. So if you just scroll down, then there are options. I know at some points there's spaces between, a large space between numbers, but if you scroll all the way down, then like 26 through 31 is there. No. Okay. <laughs> um, if you folks all, what do you call, I know you folks are looking there, but if you look in your, um, don't you have a Oh yeah, there's there? a copy of the uh, monthly report in your folder. It should look like this. It's front and back. Okay, so also put the um, members present. So if you have an attendance list, then or the secretary should have that so it would be easily input it in there. If the faculty advisor was present, be sure to click yes in your Kiwanis. <coughs> if a Kiwanis was present, then also click yes on that. Um, if you had a guest speaker, so all these, they have a button where you can scroll down and click the information or you can type it in as well. Um, if you had an inter-club, so if there is like, it's all down here in the code. So if there is with sponsor, then you put S. If it was with Kiwani's family, then it's KF. If it was KC, it was with another key book. So just keep that in mind. Can you just press and doesn't it come down? No <laughs> <laughs> and, and the reason why that's easier is because sometimes, you know, you have an interclub during the month and it's with everybody, you know? So if you look at it, it tells you, and you just have to hit the thing. You don't have to write K, S, Y, whatever. You know what I mean? It's all there. So what if it's with more than one of those things? Yeah, like, that's why I so say when you click it down, it has all the options. Why, you can just click it? Yeah. Put a check mark. Oh, yeah. See, like this. So you can put a check mark in front of more than one? No, you don't have to put a check mark. You see, it says over here, so S is for with your sponsor, KF is with your Kiwanis family. So what if it's with your Kiwanis family and another key club? Yeah. And there's the other option. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I can't read it from back there. <laughs> <laughs> and then just include your board meeting dates. Again, there's other spaces, but... Um, just clarification, S is when you do projects like with NHS and CFPS? No. No? no? Those kinds of project? projects don't. It's not an interclub because it's not Kiwanis family. Oh, okay. So yeah, this interclub is just with your Kiwanis family. If you do projects like that, then you can include it with um, projects with an, another organization. Okay. Yeah. But you know, you're going to tell you something. Question? You guys are really lucky on Oahu because you see that place where it says S means with your sponsor. So like when you first do something with Kaneohe, that's S, right? But let's say that you first are at Missouri and you folks are there, your Kiwanis is there, Honolulu Kiwanis is there, Roosevelt is there, Kamehameha is there. See how many things you get? We cannot do that. We only have one Kiwanis. We have never done you know, on our island, something with another Kiwanis club because we don't have another Kiwanis club. So you see how you first can, and I know it's not about points, but you can really build points by doing all of those things. So make sure you check that button because I'll, I'll tell you this. I'm telling Kelly, Kelly, look, they did this Missouri thing and I saw in the Kiwanis, uh, Mrs. Tokunaga's newsletter, so and so, 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 there, but you just didn't say that. So you just lose points. You know what I mean? Not lose points, but you don't get as many points. Alright, you guys better come out to the Okay. And then, so if you were in, in attendance at a Kiwanis meeting or DCM, then don't forget to include a date and then if members were present or not. And I know it's very hard to go to a Kiwanis meeting, but um, summertime might be a fun time to go and meet your Kiwanis. I know that Kaiser's gone to Kiwanis meeting because I see your name on the, your first name on the thing. But that's just a good thing if you can do that. Um, because during school, you know, I don't know when you first have all the meetings, but like our Kiwanis, they like to have meat at lunch because they're all old and retired. <laughs> Most of them are old and retired. <laughs> So they like to meet for lunch because then they can stay for two hours or whatever. 
but so we cannot go except summer. So we try to go at least once or twice during the summer because then we at least the officers go so that they can get to meet them. Okay, so division or region, if you get LTG communication, which is either emails, calls, or mail from me, then don't forget to include or check or click on one of these. You may want, if I don't send an email directly to you, you may want to check with your um, advisor or your president because I'll most likely send it to them. And then if you're, attending, if you're in attendance at your division council meeting, for example, today, don't forget to put yes and the amount of members that were in, in attendance. And then same for any one of these. Okay. So when you go to RCC, it's like a region event. Have like region training programs. Yeah. And then since this year is going to be off the training conference as well, then don't forget to put yes for that. Any questions? Okay, so going on to member relations, if you had a newsletter issued this month, then change that to the amount of newsletters you had submitted or you created this month. If you had any new member inductions, training, or meetings, then don't forget to change these. Um, yes, no, yeses. Um, if you had any articles submitted to the division or CNH, and we'll let you know. Oh, well, if you submit it to the division, then you're automatically click yes. And if your club election reports were filed or directory was filed, then please. Click yes, and this is not going to transfer to every one of your MRFs after that. So you may want to go back and check and make sure if you did submit this information that each month it says yes on it. And then on to special events. Um, if you had a banquet, whether it was in your club or division, then don't forget to note that down. I know some people had banquets this month or this past month, which is great. So yeah, don't forget to include that there. And any one of these. It could be you is you had a, a, a party where you installed your new officers, right? So you can count that. Or if you had a little pinning ceremony for your new members, you can count that, right? Those are all special kinds of events. Or maybe, I don't know about you, but nowadays they like for you to invite the parents to come to a meeting or whatever. And so you can do that. Because those are special. Those are not the normal things. That you do. Okay, so... We're going to go over this part of the MRF. So most likely all of the projects you do are service projects. So don't forget to include or mark X here. And remember to mark all the categories that apply to project. doesn't need to be one. So if it was a service project, then please include that. But if you did it under any one of these categories, please also include an X under there. Most likely your project that you do will benefit your club, whether it was a service project where you learn more about your community or help build leadership ability skills. Or if it was like a leadership camp where members were there in attendance, you did a project or you know your members were getting trained to become better leaders, that also benefits your club. Um, if it was a social, getting to know your club better, that of course benefits your club. So this is a, actually a pretty much given for you. So you can click that all the time or mark an X all the time for each project that you do. An ongoing project, if you do it every month or if you do like a weekly thing, it's ongoing. For example, um, within the our Kiwanis, we do recycling and it's most likely... They do Missouri. I noticed that some people do Missouri almost every month or every yeah. other month. So That's what you call an ongoing project. Yeah. Um, vision project? I guess you can count that as your DCM. No, you your division know. project is, is... You didn't do your focus. Yeah, so I'll let you know on that. District project is Project Jumpstart, like it, I explained before. If you do a project that benefits benefit children ages 0 to 5, then please mark that. This is also a major emphasis project. So if you do a project that falls into that category, please mark district and major emphasis project. When we say 0 to 5, does that include kindergartners? Yeah, because... So if we do something yeah. with an elementary school, yeah, and you just happens so to have yeah. kindergartners there, we could say that that's okay. Yeah, so making you have like five year olds in there, like if you work with kids five to like older, when I had my district project um, committee meeting, they said that's fine because you're still working with kids five years old. Um, okay, and if you work with 
another organization, for example, the NHS thing, then that's where you, you can mark your project that, that was done with another organization. Okay, so your Kiwanis projects are most like, or if you do anything with your Kiwani sponsor, your Kiwani family, then you can most likely mark all of these. Like for us, when we do things with our Kiwanis, it's always with our sponsor since there's only one Kiwanis family. So I always had marked all of these. But if you just do it with your sponsor, then you can just mark these. But so if you do a joint project, post it with your Kiwanis, so post it with your um, Kiwani sponsor or whatnot, then please mark all that. So yeah, just be cautious or aware when you do things with your Kiwani family because they may fall under, um, maybe not all three categories, but maybe one or two. Um, the foundation foundation project is a pediatric trauma program. So I don't know, I don't know if Kelly is going to do that this year. But if you do raise funds for PTP, then you can put it as foundation. And that's also um, the district project and major emphasis because PTP has to do with children. So you understand that um, one project might have as many as five, six, seven check marks all the way across, right? I don't, I don't remember ever seeing a project where you checked every single one, but you, you see where you can check a lot. So you have to look real carefully at your project and do kind of an analysis in your head as you click it. So because you've us here, and maybe your secretary's not here, if you can make sure you share that information, okay? And a good idea too, if, like to tell your secretary, since you're here and they're, if they're not, then you should encourage them to send it to you as well as your advisors first before submitting it to me. That way they can look it over and if they see any changes, then you can change it before Technically, you Technically, they're it. supposed to send it to the advisor be, and get approval because it's like the, the, the advisor is supposed to, in a sense, in the old days, we have to sign it and mail it. Now, of course, we do it electronically, but so they're supposed to look at it because if you send in something and it's not correct, they're the ones who might be called on it. Okay, and then also if it's a fundraiser, then don't forget to mark it. It can be a service project and a fundraiser. For example, if you're doing like a car wash, which I noticed some of you guys did, then you are doing service, as, but you can mark it as a fundraiser as well. Well, who are you doing service for with a car wash? Maybe you're in a domain. Yeah. PYP. Yes, you have to be, you have to be very careful. If you do the fundraiser, if you do the fundraiser, and you first are going to keep the money because you're going to use it to pay for you to go to RTC or convention, then that's a fundraiser. That's not a service project. But let's say you're doing relay for life or something like that, where it's um, a service project because it's cancer society. All the money you earn, which is a fundraiser, is going to some nonprofit, you know, some other agency. Then it's a service project and a fundraiser. You understand? <coughs> sometimes it's both, sometimes it's only a fundraiser. Okay, and then when you do have fundraisers, if, or if you do raise money, then don't forget if it's for service and you put them out or if it's for your club, then also include that. And if you spend any money on your project, then you should input that information that way when you look back at all these months for the like an upcoming year, you can see how much you spend and whether you need to budget your money better or where you should spend money more or not. And then in this area, if you're doing it for your club, but it's a Kiwanis event, then put the amount of money raised for your club. Like for example, our Kiwanis, we did um, a ticket fundraiser and the money was split. We did a miso soup breakfast yeah. and they made $10,000. But we didn't make 10000 so we kind of put 10000 You understand? Okay, so whatever is the share that you made, because maybe they gave you, they gave us a dollar per ticket and we only sold like 400 tickets, so we got $400, you know? Okay, but we know that in the end we're gonna get some of that money because they sponsor different things and they spend the money on us anyway, but that's how it is. So you have to be careful because um, one group in the mainland, I looked at and I was, I fell down and said that, remember, that's that Key Club said that they earned $126,000 in one month. I went, excuse me, how did they earn 126? dollars Well, it was all their Kiwanis and their Key Clubs and their builders and everybody made $126,000. But they themselves didn't make $126,000. You know? So like, if we ever do something at RTC, we're gonna have to figure out a system to identify how much because we had that problem last year. Last year we earned almost 
we three hundred ninety plus dollars for PTP, and so we submitted it, and we said this is from Division Twenty Two. But by right, we should have been able to say it was from, you know, Roseville, Kamehameha, Kaiser, whatever, you know. And we didn't do that because we didn't know how much everybody spent or donated or ate. Remember, we sold the snacks. <laughs> so we will be better at it, so that you just can get credit. Okay, so we're going to do a practice and you're going to tell me where these projects will fall under. So, Kiwani's miso soup breakfast, you should include a project description because that will tell me what you guys did, as well as give me an idea, another project idea for, in case another club asks for your know, project ideas and you can say, oh, hey, this club did this, so if you want to contact them about this project, then you can do so and then you have more project ideas so we can share it within the club. Okay, so if you want to for breakfast, the project description is, prior to the project, each member was given five breakfast tickets to sell. We are very happy that all club members sold their five tickets. At the Kiwani's Miso Soup Breakfast project, key clubbers worked with our sponsoring Kiwani's club and fellow clubs in our Kiwani's family to complete various tasks, including working as servers, washing dishes, and serving the di diners that decided to eat it. The project was overall successful, but the cleanup process could have been planned better. It was nice getting to work with our Kiwani's family again. So, can anyone tell me what this project, what categories this project will fall under? Which can, can you check the first one? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, what about the second one? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Ongoing project? No. 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 Division project? No. District project? No. Governor focus project? No. Project with an organization? No! No! It's your another fundraiser, but it's a little bit different, right? Okay, so does it fall under a service project? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Project that benefits your club? Yes. 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 Because it's not like a yearly thing like you do it every year, but more like monthly or weekly kind of. What about quarterly? Yeah, it could be quarterly. Quarterly is good. Okay. Yeah. 
Like your death. Our, no, like our signing agent. Okay. Um, is it a division or district project? Yeah. <laughs> no. 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 We don't all do it. Okay. Project with another organization? Yes. What do you do with the American Cancer Society? Yeah. Okay, can you jump to this project? Yes. 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 No. 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 Okay, I know fundraiser. Okay, so in this case, if you did it for service and the money you raise is going to go to help cancer patients, then your money would go under for service. Okay, and if you spend, oh, oh, and if you spend any money, for example, in this case, they did props or games, and if you bought anything, then they would put the amount they spent on the project. I have one question. Let's say that all of us here went to a Relay for Life, which started at 6 o'clock at night and went to 6 o'clock in the morning. And all of us earned like, I don't know, $25 and we donated it to American Cancer. We had a good time. So can you tell me when it says total member hours and total members, do you know how to figure out that number? All of us here. So all of us here, we count all of us, right? That's the number of members. Do all of us get uh, 12 hours because we were there for 12 hours? Yes. Yes. If you were there a number of times. Yes. So you have to think, well, what did I do while I was there? If I was sleeping, and there's some people who come and they sleep for six hours. Right? So they, they, were, they, they were there physically, but they weren't there. Right? You understand? So you have to think. And, and you don't have to sit there and say, oh, well, Jensen slept from one to three. Okay, Diana slept from three to two to four or whatever. You know, you don't have to do that. But you have to kind of think about it and say, well, on the average, how many people actually participated? We're walking the track or doing the games or helping with the luminaries or whatever else they do, you know, all those things. And so, like, for our club, because we, because nobody wants to, count all those minutes or hours or whatever. We all have an agreement. You come from six to six, we give you five hours, are you cool with that? They go, we're cool with that. So we just give them five hours times all the people who come. Because we don't want to figure all that out. But some of them literally work for 10 hours and others maybe work only for three hours. But on the average, you know, that's how we do it. So whenever you do any activity, you have to remember that just because they come, if they're not doing service, you're really not supposed to count that time. But who is going to sit there and write down all of that? So you just have to kind of be kind of honest and figure that out as you do it. Because I'll tell you this, Kelly and I don't know. We trust you and your advisors. So if you put down those hours, we believe you. You understand? Okay. But you know, and so, because do you do you um, do you tell the tell your your members? Oh, all of you did great this month because you all got 12 hours because you came for relay for life, even though you didn't do anything. But it was okay. You came. You slept, but you came. You know. So you have to deal with that. Okay. And like at our club, we don't we don't do that. So every club is different. You decide how, and we're going to accept what report you turn into us. Do you guys have any questions about that? I do have, well, I'm not sure you're getting to it, but when we do fundraisers, we have a hard time figuring out hours on fundraisers. So like when they do UNICEF, how do you guys figure out how many hours you get for UNICEF? Okay, just just because we're doing Relay for Life right now, this is what we told them. If, you go, if you're gonna come from six to six, you get your five hours because we expect you to do something. But that's something that you have uh, hours right. that you have. But this is what it is with the money. We tell everybody you have to register and you donate twenty-five dollars, and that gives you one hour. So for every twenty-five dollars you earn, we give you an extra dollar. I mean, hour. <laughs> Not dollar. An hour. And it, so didn't somebody ask us what is the maximum number of hours we yeah. can earn? So we said, and we said you can earn a maximum of fifty. Five from being there and ten 
from earning two hundred and fifty dollars. Because, you know, if you do that, that's fabulous. Although last year was it YK had a boy that did two thousand dollars? Oh my God, I almost fell down when I saw that. But you know, stuff like that. But that's kind of what we do. So for UNICEF, we change that amount. So you take the box, you sign out the box, you turn it back, and it's ten dollars or more. We give you one hour. If it has twenty dollars, we we'll give you two hours. And so we don't count. We make you count. But we trust. And that's how it is. You know, if you short five cents, I'm not gonna dock you because you short five cents. So you, as a club, you first can figure that out. And just so long everybody knows, then it's okay. And just so long you, we agree so it's fair. So on the MRF, it yes. can be just written yes. out hours. And I'll be very honest with you, if Kelly or I have a question about it, we will let you know. Just like Waikia, and I, I'm sorry to say this, but just like Waikia, they had this thing on there and we looked at it and we said, what is this 165 hours and it's not a service project it's not you know because you can look by the the x's right what is this 165 hours so when we went below it said we gave them 165 hours for advertising <coughs> key club and showing spirit we went, no so we emailed them back and we said what is this do you is this a service project is this something that's worthy of hours you give people hours for wearing their shirt to school on Tuesday? And then they went, oh, sorry. So they erased it. I said, as a club, if you want to do that, that's your own thing. But that's not an MRF thing. You know what I mean? To provide, to show spirit and we're giving you another. So we will question some things, but very, very rarely do we ever question anything. Okay, we're going to do one last one. So Family Literacy Night, the project description is, no preparations were needed for this project. As a project, members set up the Hawaii Elementary School's cafeteria for the event, read to the kindergarten through grade three students, and cleaned up after the event was done. This project was very successful as many students and their families from the school were in attendance, and hopefully they were motivated to read to their children on a daily basis or have their children read on their own. We should continue to do this project as the young kids enjoy it when we read to them. So, is this Family Literacy Night a service project? Yes. yes. Okay. Is it benefit your club? Yes. Okay. Is it an ongoing project? No. Not yet. If you do it, if you continue to do it monthly, then next month you can say it's an ongoing project. But since it's a start, it's not quite ongoing yet. Is it a division project? No. District project? No. Well, if kindergartners are there. Yeah, five. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It can be considered. Um, project with another organization because you work with the school. Major emphasis project. Yes. Because yes. what is the major emphasis theme? No. Children. Children, their future, our focus. Yes. Um, project with Kiwani. It could be if your Kiwanis yeah, came and yeah. brought juice and cookies for everybody. Okay, foundation project. <laughs> yes. No, because you didn't raise money for PTP. And is it a fundraiser? No. Okay. Okay, so good job on that. So hopefully you got a little more information on how to fill that part up. If you do have any questions like what your project does pertain to, then you can just feel free to email me or Note that in your um, MRF submission when you do submit it, you know, I can let you know and you guys can fix it. And actually this year, you know, at the end of the year at DECON, uh, the district executives talk about like the goals that were set. And so this year, we actually didn't reach our goal for service hours as a district, which is kind of sad. And the main reason for that is because clubs don't report sometimes. And so this session is really important because they, they do statistics like, oh, we had 585 <coughs> major emphasis projects in our district. And it's important because it shows like the difference we make throughout the world because it's an international organization. Are you going to go Yeah. Okay, so this club snapshot is very important. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, sorry. Um, I was wondering, what, what's our division and district project? Um, division, I'll let you know about that, but district is Project Jumpstart, so working with kids um, 
ages there's five. Oh, okay. So whether it's working directly with them or if you want to like do something and give it to them. And then what was our major emphasis again? Same. Um, children. children. Yeah, children. Any children. Any children. Yeah. Doesn't need to be zero yeah. to five. And then our foundation is only PPP yeah. fundraiser. Yeah. Okay, so this project snapshot, it allows me to see the like, club growth because from here, the project session, it tells me what service projects you did, but I want like, to get to know more of what your club did, whether you include the, some fun service projects you did this month or um, any socials or fun activities or if you like recognize anybody for their hard work, then you can include it in, in the club sna um, snapshot section. You don't have to repeat what is already there because we can read that. In fact, you shouldn't do that. This should be more of a reflection about how your club did. But do not put snapshot. People put pictures. Don't put pictures. <laughs> Words. Okay? Or you can say something like, you know, this month we had a lot of projects and we were really excited, da da da, or this month we didn't do as many projects that we would have liked to, or this month we, we kind of set a goal to do this and we did that, or whatever. So those are some of the things that we would love to share. Yeah, and it doesn't mean anything long, just something no. short and simple is fine. Okay, so if you go down, up next is um, project description. So if you can include a project description, that'd be great. It allows us to see what you did and if it would be considered. Or, and it, if you're not too sure where it's gonna be placed on the, on the project section, then from your description, I can help you try to um, better fill out that project section. I just want you to know that um, uh, Kelly, because she was a former secretary, she writes them very detailed. But not everybody does it very detailed. But at least if you put one or two sentences, that's good. But if you leave it blank, we have no idea. Do you understand? So even if it's only one or two sentences, the project was held at, you know, here, and you know, something, one of the things you did. Yeah. Yeah. You just need to, we, we would really like to know what you did and if you thought it was worthy. And the reason for that is because um, let's say that between Colin and Jensen, when they also look at it, they can say, wow, they did this project. How come all the Oahu clubs didn't participate? Maybe we should share that. Because then they can look at what you said and share that information. You know, just like how Mrs. Chalk just shared about adopt the bus stop. I mean, who would think? I would never have thought of adopt a bus stop, but that's a fabulous idea because then at least the students at your school always have a clean bus stop, right? Okay. So that's pretty much it. Um, if I think the most important thing you need to know about MRF is you can always update. Mm -hmm. And so you know, sometimes some of you may have gotten a note from. Kelly that says, oh, what about this, you know, should have put this in or whatever. You can go back, like even now, you can go back to April and click on the April button and say, you know what, now I understand how all these X marks goes and go back and put the X marks where they're supposed to be, right? Or whatever it is or that you have to do. if you want to go do. back to this past month, yeah. you can do it too, and submit it to me whenever. And you don't have to send it until the next one is due, because oh, yeah. when the next one is due, she can, and you can just tell her, we, you know, here is the June MRF, I updated May. Then she can just go back and check, you know. Yeah. And then if you do get a, um, or if you forget to include something, like for example, you forget to include that you were in attendance at a DCM and Jensen sent this thing to me and it says that you were there, then I'll just let you know and you can fix that. Do you guys have any questions? I'm sorry it took so long, but you know what? Once you get this down pat, then we're good to go. And that's why I always tell people, you have to share with other members. You know, like, you, you're a senior this year, and if you don't tell the junior or the sophomore that's coming up, then they're gonna have to learn it all over. So you might as well share that news with other people. And you know, every once in a while, club presidents, you might wanna say, okay, we're gonna have a board meeting, and we're just gonna look at our MRF because the treasurer maybe doesn't look at it and all the vice presidents don't look at it. So maybe you can show them and say, see, this is what it is and look, we're doing really good. I've got yourself up. Okay, also in your folder is this little pink worksheet. Um, but if you look at like, if you go back and you can do this with your um, 
your other offices and have a meeting maybe this summer. Um, this is just area, you can fill out this and this is like to help you plan for the upcoming year and to set goals. So if you notice on the AAR that, oh, maybe you want to have projects or be involved with more projects with your Kiwani family, then you can note that as an area to work on and then just create a little step-by-step -step plan. It doesn't have to be that detailed, but just give you an idea of what you can do and then when you may want to start the project. And so an easy first one for many of you, because I noticed that not many of you have guest speakers, you can say, our, you know, our goal is to have at least three or four guest speakers you know, this school year, right? And then your step could be, ask the Kiwanis if they know somebody interesting, or ask somebody's parent. Because you'll be surprised some of your own members' parents have an interesting job, or you know what I mean? Or have something interesting they might want to share. Or you can ask, like, you know, Special Olympics or American Cancer, some agency you work with to come. And actually, you can always call the lady from Children's Miracle Network. She always comes bearing gifts. Keychains, braids, what do you call these? Wristbands. Tell her, we want to do uh, something with Children's Miracle Network, but we want to know more about it. Invite her, she'll come, give a little speech, give you a little gift, and you can go and do a project for them. And then also in your folder is a supportive home project because you do not only support your um, school and community, you also support your home. So if at any time that your club is short on projects or don't know what to do, then you can have a supportive home thing where members can do a project at home, but be sure that your advisor kind of signs off on it and it's something relevant to your, or you know, that would be... Um, Worthy. Yeah, of doing, for example, like cleaning windows. This is project that is not like I'm gonna clean my room because you should be doing that on a daily basis or your chores. That is not considered a support of home project because if it's something you should be doing at home, then you shouldn't be doing that. But if you want to go out of your way to, for example, maybe like wash your screen, wash your windows, then that's something you can do and get hours for. And, and um, when we let our students do it, I make them tell me about it and I sign. They write down what their project description and I sign because I told them, I don't want you to do it and then after this I tell you no. And and this is because of the day of technology, this is it. I had this one boy says, I'm going to clean the garage. I said, why is your garage dirty? He said, yes. So he took a picture before and after he cleaned it, he said, after. And he submitted that and I said, okay, good, three hours. Because he you could tell you had to work really hard. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it depends on what it is you're going to do. And I asked um, um, Colin to share what Punoho does, but he had to leave. But at their next DCM, can you have Colin do it? Because what, Eola, um, what Punoho School does is they have what they call independent projects. And the reason they have independent projects is they're very, very fortunate, and they have what they call the Luke Center. The Luke Center is, an, is a place where People in the community call Punahou and say, these are projects that we have in the community and can you help us find students? So they go on their own, you know? So maybe they, they're busy and they can't do a lot of the projects with the key club, but they can go there and they say, oh look, this project is on Sunday, I can do this project, and they need two people, so I'm gonna find a friend and we're gonna go. And so they have a form that looks very much like this um, home project and they call it independent project. And so um, you still have to do all the reflections and write it down. And then um, I asked him if they have a limit as to the number of hours. But um, he didn't know. But he's going to be able to share that with you folks. Because I'm sure that maybe, not all of you, but there's some of you who like play sports and like, I don't know, maybe you play football and football practice or baseball practice goes into 7 o'clock at night you know, and your game and whatever, and you just don't have time to be doing service project, but you really want to, but you just don't have time. So if you can find an independent project and you can do it on your own. How do those home projects get written on the MRM? Um, uh, on the bottom, for one of them, what did, what did um, it said miscellaneous um, yeah, I use various projects and you can just say oh, that various projects. in the project description you can say um, you had members who like did, or you can just think through like examples of what they did to their home. But um, yeah, Punahou calls it individual projects, so I guess you can do that too. Yeah. You know what, we'll do a sample of that and then um, we'll send it out before the, uh, in our in our next mail out so that you just can do that. And maybe we can send you um, 
an electronic copy of that support form oh, yeah, yeah. because then you can change it. You know the way you want, put your club name on it, and if you have some other things that you want to do, um, like um, Hilo and Waikia, when we agreed about this, we put a limit of three hours a month because we didn't want somebody doing ten or fifteen hours. So even if you wash windows and it takes you five hours, we only give them three hours. But you know, we get the nicest letters from parents. Thank you very much. You know, if you didn't do this, my child would not have helped me to do this project. <laughs> and, you know, they go on. So it's fun sometimes to get nice notes from parents. Okay. So you can start all ready for this year? Okay. So what is the goal for everybody here? For your AAR? 170. 170. Oh, I like that. 135. Okay. 200. 140. 190. Wait, what? Who are the four schools? Uh, the only four schools yeah. that got diamonds. And I did this by one point, yeah? Why did this by one point? I was sad. You don't know how I was negotiating at convention. I was negotiating really hard. But um, Hilo, Waikia, Kauai, and Punahou. But our goal is to have not so much diamond, but distinguished. Because distinguished also had Kaiser, Aea, Mililani, Waipahu. So there were a lot of distinguished clubs. And you know what? That's our goal, distinguished clubs, right? It's like getting an A. I want everybody to get A. And we also have to thank Roosevelt because for two months in a row, Roosevelt turned in the first MRF of the month. Is that not right? Yes. Thank you, Roosevelt. But we would rather have it linked than never. Thank you very much because we have to clean up. And if you have any questions, Kelly will meet Kelly will meet you right outside and you can talk stories with her. And me and Jensen are cleaning up.